When you watch a movie or a TV show that you've never seen before, do you know how it's going to end? No, we don't know how it's going to end. And oftentimes, the best movies or TV shows are the ones that end in a way that we weren't expecting. Nate and his story with Operation Alka didn't end the way that many people expected, or even I'm sure that they expected. And yet their story wasn't done. Even though they had died, the story of the Alka people continued. Rachel, even though these people had murdered her brother, loved the Alkas and wanted them to know about the Lord Jesus. And Ioma was amazed by this. How could somebody whose her own family had killed Rachel's brother, how could Rachel still love her? How could Rachel still love the Alka people? Dahuma wanted to know more about God, but Rachel, who wanted to know more of the Alka language, and Dayuma, who wanted to know more about God, had a problem. You see, we know that Dayuma worked for a local farmer, and Dayuma's hours were very long, so by the time she was done, she really didn't have much time to work with Rachel. Rachel did the best thing that she knew how to try and fix the problem. What do you think Rachel did? Ooh, those are probably some good answers, but Rachel prayed. Maybe you said that. Rachel knew that God had the answer, and so she asked God to take care of this. And she must have been shocked when one day, Dayuma's boss came up to her and said, Rachel, I want you to spend more time with Dayuma. <gasps> Can you show your shocked face? Why was he, her boss telling Rachel this? Well, her boss went on to tell her and say, Rachel, I have been invited to go to America and to speak on a TV show, and I've decided to bring Dayuma with me. So I want you to learn more of her language so you can tell the audience what Dayuma is saying. What an amazing answer to prayer. God had heard Rachel's prayers and had answered them with a yes. Dayuma was so excited whenever she got off work now because her boss let her off early and she would have extra time to go to Rachel and they spent loads of time together preparing to be on TV. What would you think if you were going to be on TV? Would you be excited? Would you be nervous? I bet Dayuma and Rachel felt all of those things. But finally the day came for them to fly to America and to be on TV. Now, when Rachel and Dayuma were on there, they had a great time and it was so much fun to get to be on TV. But afterwards, Dayuma got sick. In fact, she got so sick that she couldn't even go on an airplane to fly back home to the jungle. What would Rachel do? Her friend was sick and they couldn't return home yet. Well, Rachel thought about when her brother Nate was little. Nate used to come to her and she would tell him missionary stories when he was sick or when it was time to go to bed. And so Rachel thought, what if I did the same thing for Dayuma? Dayuma was too sick to teach Rachel any more of the Alka language. And so Rachel decided to become the teacher. Only this time she wasn't going to tell missionary stories. Rachel was going to tell the true stories about the Lord Jesus. Remember that this is what Dayuma wanted. Dayuma wanted to spend more time with Rachel so she could hear more about this God who loved her. And after listening to these stories and loving hear hearing about the Lord Jesus, Dayuma made the most important decision of her life. Dayuma trusted in the Lord Jesus as her savior. Oh, Rachel was so excited. Can you maybe cheer or clap your hands? Very good. She was so excited because this was the day that her and Nate and all the missionaries who had died had been praying for. This was the day that the first Alka person believed in the Lord Jesus as their savior. Oh, she was so happy. And even more than that, Dayuma was so happy. She knew that God had begun a change in her heart. Remember at the very beginning, a couple weeks ago, when we first met and heard about Dayuma and how she was angry and scared and sad and had run away from home. And now God had changed her heart so that she didn't hate or was afraid of her family anymore. 
Pretty soon Dioma began to get better and she was all better and ready to go home on the airplane back to the jungle. So her and Rachel flew back and when they got there, Dayuma decided that she would go home. Not home to where she worked with for the local farmer, but home to the Alka people. She wanted to tell them the story she had heard about Jesus. And so she prepared, got her things ready, and she even got presents ready to take home to her family and to her friends. She brought them a bunch of puppies. What would you think if somebody gave you a puppy for a gift? I know, I would be so excited. I would love to get a puppy. But this wasn't the best gift Dioma had for them. What was the best gift Dioma had? Even better than puppies. You're right. The best gift was the good news of the Lord Jesus. And so off into the jungle, Dayuma went. Maybe you can pretend to walk like you're going straight back into the jungle. Good job. Well, Rachel waited and waited and waited. <gasps> what would happen? Would Dayuma be okay? Would the Alka people who had killed her brother and many of the tribal people around them and even their own people kill Dayuma as well? Would they listen to her message? Would Dayuma be okay? Oh, Rachel waited and waited for days, even weeks, until one day Dayuma came out of the jungle and she had a message for Rachel and the other missionaries' wives that they were not expecting. She came and she told them, my people have heard the stories about the Lord Jesus. I have told them, and I have told them about you and the others, and they want you to come and tell them more. Oh, they were so excited. This was again another day that they had prayed for, that they would be able to tell the Alka people about the Lord Jesus. So Rachel and Betty Elliott, if you remember, Jim Elliott was one of the other missionaries who had been killed. And some of the other wives packed up their things. So let's pack up our stuff. We can't bring too much because we're going into the jungle. And they packed up their stuff and they went off into the jungle with Dayuma and came to live with the Aka people. Many times, over and over again, God had his hand in protecting Rachel and the other missionaries that were there. And Dayuma herself became the first Alka missionary. Every Sunday, she would sit with the Alka people and she would tell them the stories of Jesus. Rachel and Betty could have done this themselves, but they were still learning the Alka language. And many times they made mistakes that were so funny, it would distract the people from the real message they were trying to share. Dayuma was the perfect person to tell them about the Lord Jesus, and she had become a missionary, somebody who tells others about God. Well, Dayuma told the people day after day, again and again, about the true stories of God and the Lord Jesus. And these people watched as Rachel and Betty, wives of men they had killed, loved them and stayed with them. And God changed their hearts. They trusted in the Lord Jesus. Many of the Alka people did. And the Bible says that they began to change, that their lives were so much different than who they used to be. Remember, Alka means savage. They were known for killing other people and for hating others and their enemies. And now, the others around them began to see that they were different, that instead of hating their enemies, they would oftentimes help them and that they were telling them about the love of God and what God had done for them so that they could love others. The Alka people had changed. And in fact, they no longer began to be called the Alka people. Remember, Alka means savage, and that wasn't really their name. That was a mean name that the people around them had given them. Their real name was the Waudani people. Can you say Waudani? Very good. Waudani means the people. God had changed them, and so from now on, we are going to call them Waudani. Let's say it again. Waudani. Very good. Now, the Waudani peoples, not only was their heart changed from the Lord Jesus and Him coming and giving them a new heart and new want-tos to go God's way, but their lives changed in other ways. You see, 
The Wow Donnies remembered Nate and his friends and how Nate and his friends had flown over them with the airplane and how oftentimes this airplane had brought them really good things, gifts, things that they needed, and had even been used to help people who were sick or injured and take them to a place where they could get help. And so the Wow Donnie decided they wanted a place so that a plane could land near them. So they cleared some of the trees and some of the shrubs and a plane would come often throughout the months and would bring them different supplies and things that they needed. What are some things you can think of that they might have, that they might have needed? Yeah. Maybe some of those were things that the plane did deliver, but one day the plane delivered the best thing that they could ever get. What do you think that was? Well, what the plane delivered was the book of Mark from the Bible. You see, Rachel and others had been working so hard to learn the Alka language and to teach the people how to read that they translated parts of the Bible into the Alka language. So now the Alka or Waudani, sorry, the Waudani people now could read the Bible for themselves. They could read about God for themselves. And when they began to read about God, they became even more impressed with how much they needed to share this message with the tribes around them. And so the Waudani began to travel and tell the other tribes in the jungle around them about the Lord Jesus. Jesus. The Waodani people became missionaries. Now sometimes they would go and walk up to a village on foot and try and tell them, and sometimes this worked, and sometimes it didn't. One day they went up to another tribe and they walked up to them to go and meet them and tell them about Jesus. But when they got there, the tribe was angry and began to angrily chase them away. And not only did they chase them, they kept tracking them into the jungle so that the Wadani people who had gone to this village became very afraid because they couldn't get away from them and this other tribe was catching up to them. And so one man in the group prayed and said, God, please send the rain and hurry. And right after that, rain came pouring down and the Waodani people were able to escape because the rain washed away their footprints. The Waodani people decided to think of another way that they could tell these people about the Lord Jesus. And they remembered Nate's plan and how Nate had told them about Jesus at first by bringing gifts and, play, and flying them over them and by telling them good and friendly things from the airplane to show that they were friends. And so the Waodani people got somebody to fly them over other villages and did the same thing. And oftentimes this worked as well. The Waodani people had been changed. Not only had their lives changed, but their hearts had changed. Not all the Waodani people changed and trusted in the Lord Jesus, but many did. We've seen in Operation Alka how God has done many things that only God could do. Only God could take a man like Nate Saint, who knew how to fix things and work with things with his hands when he was a little boy and take him into the jungles of Ecuador. And only God could take his murder and the, and the other four missionaries who had died and use that to tell others about God, about the good news of Jesus. Only God could take Rachel and could give her a love for the people who had murdered her brother. A love that was so strong that Rachel went to go and live with the Waodani people like we know, and she lived with them for the rest of her life. Only God could do that. Only God could take a little girl who was scared and angry and afraid and take her out of the jungles and make her a missionary to her people. God had changed Diana's life and used her to change many other lives. Only God could bring this man back into the jungles to live with the Wadani people. This man's name is Steve Saints. He was Nate Saints' son. And we read that Steve came and lived in the jungles with the Wadani people, and he became best friends with this man. This man is one of the men who killed his father, and yet he and him became best friends. Only God could do this. Only God could take the story of Operation Alka, the true story, and use it to share 
the good news of the Lord Jesus with many people around the world and to excite thousands of people who have trusted in the Lord Jesus to become missionaries themselves. Some missionaries went on to go into the jungles and deserts like um, Operation Alka. Other missionaries were missionaries in cities and other missionaries wrote, did things that we don't often think of. Like they wrote the story of Operation Alka. All these things God did and only God could do that. And the Bible says that if you have trusted in the Lord Jesus as your savior, God wants to use your life too. He can use you in any way. Maybe he's calling you to be a missionary, to leave your home and to go somewhere else and tell others about Jesus, or to be a missionary right where you're at and to tell those around you about the Lord Jesus. We know God tells all of us who have trusted in him to do that. Maybe God will use you as a doctor or a teacher or a lawyer or a police officer or anything. God can use you because he is great. He is so different from us and he loves you. The Bible says he is changing each of us to be more and more like him and that he has given each of us the command to tell others the good news about who he is and what he has done so that we do not have to spend forever away from him. That's the good news for me and the good news for you today. And I hope you guys have enjoyed listening to Operation Alka and that you will think about whether or not God would have you to be a missionary someday.